We're just getting our working our way up to Nui Dad Hill. This is the centre of the Australian Task Force Base during the Vietnam War from 1966 to 1972. This is the centre of the base. Half of the hill has been chopped away. You probably noticed lots of rocks and that. That's because it's been used as a quarry in recent years for road building. You see that there? That comes down like that. That actually went down gradually, you know. They really got into it and then they stopped. The hill was, it is actually the middle of a huge rubber plantation, which you're going to see a bit later. And Nui Dat means small hill. During the period of the war, the SAS, the super soldiers, were based on top of this hill. And all the other troops were in the rubber. And at night they would fly out late night on their special missions from the top of the hill. Phantoms of the jungle. We consider them to be super soldiers, but they were out there doing their thing like they did in Afghanistan years later. This place and all the rubber trees around it was surrounded by 11 kilometres of barbed wire. And it was a little piece of Australia. And when you came here after you'd been out in the bush in operations, you felt you were in Australia in a secure sanctuary. The reason that they came here is because this is almost exactly in the middle of Fuktui province. So in other words, it was a dominating feature. And the Americans in 1966 said to the Australians, we're going to give you a province. We want you to look after it and we want you to stabilise it, control it for the duration of the war. So the Australian commanders came, flew over all the province and they had a look and they said this place is the middle. Had two other very great advantages. It had big rubber plantations all the way around it so it gave fantastic shade from the sun and also it gave great protection from visibility. So the VC and NVA and NLF forces that we were opposing could be outside or in the mountains and they could look into Nui Dat but they couldn't see what was going on because they were under the rubber trees. There was a lot of vegetation on this hill before it was dug out, lots of thick bush jungle and I used to use a tracking dog and take him for occasional practice tracks to keep his nose in. We used to go around the bottom of the hill and it was really, really thick. So when a new guy came over and took over my dog when I left, I would brought him up here on the side of the mountain and we tracked around through the bush and all the vegetation and that way he learned how to handle the dog before I left to come back to Australia. But nobody went up on top of the hill, there's no reason to. I'm walking now and my head has gone into Vietnam um, patrol mode, yeah. I'm looking at the ground now, and I'm looking at the ground very carefully. I'm walking, but I'm looking for something else in my head, you know. I'm trying to orientate myself here. This was the middle of the Australian task force, and when Brady pans around, what I'll do, what I'll do is I'll give you some indications of where we're looking. Over there, straight out to the uh, to the west, they are the Warburton Mountains or the Nui Taivais, Nui Tok Tin. They were dominating as far as the task force went, and they obviously were very, very heavily infiltrated and occupied by the VC and the NVA, NLF. I use those terms because I'm not allowed to use the word enemy while I'm in Vietnam now. I use the uh, terms of describing the, um, describing the people who were our opposition. So so you were the enemy to them. We are the enemy, uh, certainly we were, and it's their country now. And uh, the NVA means the North Vietnamese Army, the VC means Viet Cong, and the NLF means a combination of them all, the National Liberation Front or Forces. The forces who were actually opposing them, the Allied forces as we called them, were the, the, um, the Americans, the Australians, South Korea and several other countries. 
the Australians' responsibility was to dominate this province. And what you're looking at now, all the way around you, is Fuktui province. 300 kilometres wide, 200 kilometres in depth. And the most notable points are the Nui Taivai Mountains, which were there, occupied by NLF forces. The Australians only got in there a few times, because they were so hostile and so hard to get up. We swing around, and out in front of us is a place called Suinae or Nuinae. Swing around even further, heading towards the east, and on the horizon is another, uh, another range of mountains. They're called the Mao Taos and the Mao, Mao, uh, Mao Tao secret zone, occupied by the NLF forces. I'll swing around down to the south. This is the direction from which we came, and the direct south is over there. Those um, misty coloured mountains on the horizon, they are the Long High Mountains, otherwise known as the Min Dum secret zone, where we're gonna go in a couple of days. Straight down through here is the coast and the light green and the, lo and the long green they're down there, you can't see them. Immediately out in front of us there is a just barely visible a sheet of water which is actually a dam. That is the rubber plantation at Long Tan. That's where the big battle of Long Tan took place where we're going to go today, straight out there. This here is a rubber plantation through there, comes down to the end and then a rubber plantation comes up to the end and stops just there. So this, it's a big L shape. When this place was at its peak in 1968, 69, there were just under 7,000 Australians here. And in all of, the, all of that rubber, there were dozens and well, scores, hundreds of tents, four man tents under the rubber. You couldn't see them. And that was occupied, that the soldiers occupied that during their 12 month tour. Down here where this flat area is, just out there near where that house is, there was a great big helicopter pad called the Kanga Pad. And that's where the Iroquois helicopters came in and took the soldiers out to go on their operations out there. Where that first lot of rubber meets the next lot of rubber going that way, it's not really that green at the moment, and running all the way down to the tip of that road is a, a, a aircraft runway called the Luscombe Field. And if you came in here by aircraft, you came usually in on a, a caribou light aircraft that carried about um, 50 to 75 men. They're flying in from Saigon or wherever. They come over those mountains really high. As Soon as they got over the mountains, they would drop like a stone and they would land from left to right. The reason for that was, if they came in too low, they would be shot down by the opposition forces. Turn around, everybody get off, and then they would take off that way and do a huge climb straight up in the air to get over the Nui Tai Vai Mountains. When you were here on, on operations, you're, you're, you're going to be in Vietnam for 365 days, one year. It was a tour of duty. At the end of that year, you left Vietnam. During the time that you were here, of those 365 days, well over 200 of those days, you weren't here. You were out there in the jungle, where, they, where you see those mountains and the far part of the province. That's thick jungle out there, and you were out on operations. When you came back into uh, the task force base here, you could relax, let down, have a shower, hot meals, see a movie on the big screen, and then you'd carry out your duties in the camp, raking up leaves, cleaning your weapons, getting ready for your next takeout, your next operation. When the next operation was ready, all the helicopters would come in, either American or Australian, and you'd see 20 helicopters just coming in and they'd all land on that Luscombe field, and you were all lined opposite each helicopter in groups of seven, and then run out, jump on it, and they would take straight off over the rubber, and take you to where you were going to go out, out in the jungle. In the later years, a year or two after, that pad down there was established called Kanga Pad, and that's where helicopters landed and that's where you got on off. This wetness shooting down my legs. I thought, oh Jesus, I've been hit, and I've been hit between the legs. Shoved my hand straight down inside my pants 
to check everything and I realised that I'd actually pissed myself. 